Well, earlier this afternoon, I spoke to Lieutenant General Jonathan Riley, who was the commander of Multinational Division Southeast in Iraq from 2004 to 2005, and also helped set up the new Iraqi army working alongside the Americans. I asked him how he thought history will judge our involvement in Iraq. Well, Kate, I think in a way it's too early to tell because we need to know what sort of country Iraq is going to turn out in the longer term. Uh, this is now when it begins to stand on its own two feet. But I think that there are a few things that should be remembered. Uh, first is that we did what we said we would do when we went to Iraq. Uh, change the regime, replace a dictatorship with an elected and accountable government, both nationally and locally, set up accountable, proper armed forces capable of looking after their own security, and then go. After the relative ease of the actual invasion, there has been criticism both from high-ranking military figures and also politicians that mistakes were made. Would you agree with that? The mistake that we made, I think, in the beginning was that we told the Iraqi army to go home. We didn't tell it to stay in its barracks, secure its, its equipment and wait for orders. We told it to go home and it did go home. And when it went home, the population, which hated its own army, not a good position for an army to be in, wrecked what was left and stole all the weaponry, which then got into the wrong hands. Uh, so that uh, caused us a lot of problems. And in, in hindsight, uh, yeah, it was a mistake. But I think we should reflect as time went on that the force that's given us the problems uh, in reforming the security sector in Iraq isn't the one that was broken up and reformed the army. It was the one that was not, the police force. Uh, now, before you commanded British troops in Basra, you were instrumental in setting up the new Iraqi army. Uh, tell us a bit more about that and, and what kind of state you think they're in now. It took a little time for the penny to drop that uh, this was going to be a big effort and it was the birth of the insurgency that caused that penny to drop. But once it had, had dropped, the ability of the Americans to move muscle uh, in large quantities meant that an enormous effort, uh, led in the first instance by General David Petraeus, uh, accelerated uh, that, that program of development of the Iraqi army. Having had senior positions in both Iraq and Afghanistan, can you make any comparisons between the two operations? I think what, um, what I did reflect on was that in my father's generation, the, the campaign in Palestine gave the British army a very rough time indeed. But that rough time allowed them to fight and win the insurgency in Malaya. And I rather think that the rough time we had in Iraq, and we did have a rough time, uh, gave us the skills and techniques that we, need, we have needed to tackle Afghanistan. And when you look back at your contribution to what happened in Iraq, are you proud of what you've done and what do you think you've achieved? Proud of it? Well, I did what I had to do. I tried my very best to bring home all the soldiers who went with me to that place. I didn't entirely succeed. Uh, but I think I did the best job I could, and I think all of us did the best job we could.